I'm just now getting to finish some days at nine in the evening. And when do you start? Eight o'clock. Kind of long days. So, um, but in the, in the main part of the summer, it was half 11, I was still in the hospital, cleaning and feeding, medicating. Mm. Really tiring. Yeah, I can imagine. And then you've got the worry on top of whether we're going to actually close or not, mm -hmm. which is something you can do without. When yeah. You're really tired. And people keep saying, do this, do that, fundraising. Contact this one, contact that one, and you're thinking, oh, I'm trying to get the birds done. They're coming in all the time. And it's quite unthinkable to think that we won't be here for them. Ready to meet some birds. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, Michael, I think we're at the right place. I think we're at the right place. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Is he blind as well? He's not got brilliant eyesight. Oh. Do you keep them until they're maybe ready to go? No, no, I wouldn't to pass someone? them on. I wouldn't trust anyone else to look after them. Yeah, I've had them before. <laughs> yeah, so they're individually frozen, so you just take out as much as you need, and it takes a couple of minutes to defrost. So they love those. Obviously, fish is their favourite. Yeah. I get through about 20 kilos a day of food. Are they donated or...? No. Well. Oh, blimey, no. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Save me a fortune. I mean, we spent about 600 quid on fish in the last six weeks. And how many birds is it you have? Got about 30 there, another 30 there, 20 there. Who's, who's adding up? Five thousand. <laughs> That's a couple of hundred yeah. at the moment. But I'm hoping to get some more babies out. If we stay open, they could, can be overwintered, but obviously mm -hmm. the thing is to stay open, isn't it? I used to be quiet during the winter, so you could catch up on you know, things like gardening, painting yeah. the hospital, even family stuff. But now I'm covering a larger area because there's no one else doing them in Brighton. So it's like busy all the time now. And is it every day that you work? Yeah, I can't remember the last time I had a day off. Oh. And I'm very tired. People keep saying, do this, do that, fundraising. Contact this one, contact that one. And you're thinking, oh, I'm trying to get the birds done. Yeah, like it's hard enough running it alone, like yeah, fundraising's a whole thing. How did you get so many followers so quickly? I honestly, I don't know. Chillers, because they're a bit cutesy for me. But they are adorable. So how many aviaries do you have here? There must be 16 now. Yeah. If you count all the, what I call bays, which are like mini aviaries. Mm -hmm. Aviaries, Yeah, I'd love to. I thought it would be a lot louder here. With just Stephen and maybe like a couple others that are on the roof. It's so loud every single day. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they will call every now and again, but in general, it's really quiet. Isn't it? Have any ever escaped and you have to catch them? Um, do you know, we've had more trouble with the ones trying to get in. This I've had wild ones get in the Avery <laughs> when I've got food, and then I thought, what are you doing in here? And then you've got to turf them out. It's happened a couple of times in there. Greg used to go in there. But they're not rushing for the door when you open the door. Yeah. They're not trying to get out. Uh, yeah. Is this like the most friendly one? Yeah, yeah. He's too, he's too friendly. That's why he's not being released. It's so good, isn't it? Oh. It's like a little trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> well, the adults just go when they're ready, mm -hmm. but the babies go 
when it's low tide early in the morning, a good early morning low tide at the beginning of the month and then at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, two, two main periods where you can release them in a month. But it'll be, it'll be a nice low tide for quite a few days. So sometimes I'll do a big release and then a couple of days later another big release. If you miss the beginning of the month, then you've got to wait till the end of the month. Okay. So you've got, I've probably got another week before I can see whether these are ready for release. Yeah. I'm quite particular about, we put them all in separate boxes. We don't crown them in, lots of them in together. Because yeah. I think if one pecks the other one, then you've, you've undone all the good you've done. Yeah. One gets pecked in the eye on the way to the beach. It's really hard going. There's been ones that I've let go and I've been in tears on the beach. Yeah. Absolutely heartbroken at letting them go, but they're wild animals, so mm -hmm. it's yeah. not for me. And also, I've got enough. <laughs> I'm, not keep, I'm not keeping them on purpose. Yeah. If I could wave a magic wand and they're all ready to go, I'd get them all out because it <laughs> saved me a fortune. <laughs> no, I've had, oh, I've had some real heartbreakers. Yeah. I really haven't wanted to let go. They're all different. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you fall in love? more with one than another yeah you know someone said to me once why are you more attached to one but you could say that about people why are you more attached to that person than that person it's a silly question really isn't it you could not get attached to this one bless him <laughs> and then sometimes you go through so much with something thinking this is you <laughs> <laughs> well i won't go far so They're so long. I know, but why? Because they're long, they're very cuddly. Yeah. You can really. Do you have many pets at home? Or is it is this enough? Like, when you go home? Well, or this is home. Do you live here? Yeah. I didn't know this was your house as well. You well, can't, you yeah. can't. I can't work 8 till 11.30. Yes. If I'm not living here. And you, you know, I'll get birds come in at 11.30 at night or whatever. You can't go off and then come back. Because the babies, yeah. you don't know what time they're going to come in. You can't say, oh, don't bring any, only bring them between this time and that time. Yeah, I suppose. Gotta be always open. It's ridiculous. I was getting like seven birds in at 11 o'clock at night, and I was thinking, what am I meant to do with seven birds at this time of night? It's pitch black. I can't put any outside. I can't, you know, yeah. keep an eye on them. <laughs> <laughs> Two are delicate, so they're set foot. Almost kicked to death by some bloke at the um, railway station. I mean, it worries me because they're confident and they just go right up to people. And I think you don't know that person's not going to kick you. Yeah. I wish they wouldn't do that. You would see car like babies just standing in the road, or like I'd be driving my car and have to like break because they just like they don't know they're just standing they don't there. Know. No. I mean, how can you teach them not to go in the road? I think I think a lot of the ones I get in are traffic accidents. Yeah. And then I get a lot of fledglings in because people have picked them up. Mm -hmm. Because they say, oh, they're walking along the side of the road. And I think, and then somebody will pick them up because they're walking around the garden. Where are they meant to be? Mm -hmm. If they're not allowed to walk in the garden, they're not allowed to walk up the road. Yeah. They're not allowed to walk on the beach. Where the hell are they meant to go? Because the gulls like walking. They'll fly, but they do like just walking and sauntering around. So, you know, there'll be a baby on the ground walking around and people think it can't fly. It's just exploring, same as people explore. Why is he called Mr. Splat? Well, when he came in, because of neurological damage, he was sort of falling all over the place. So when you went to clean him out, there was poo up the, <laughs> up the sides and along the ceiling. Wherever you put him, there was poo all over the place because he would fall all over the place. So he was a bit splatty. <laughs> Lurches at the back, a bit, mm. bit younger. Still got, still got the dark eyes, you see. Yeah. The eyes take four years to go yellow. When he first came in, Lurch, he, um, he was on the beach, on his back, his little legs in the air. And then when you tried to right him, he just falls straight back onto his back again all the time. <laughs> so he's done really well, but he's not, you know, 100%, so he, you know, he can't go. We've got Silver there. If he turns around, you can see he's got a curly beak broken bit there and it's also slightly crossed over. Does that happen because it breaks or are they born like that? I, th I think the broken one, he must have got hit by something. Mm -hmm. See, she can't see very well. This rye, this two yellows, 
So if you put her in the main aviary, she wouldn't get to the food. You yeah. throw the food, by the time she's worked out where it is, someone else would have eaten it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to, if we're still here, we're going to have to build a partially sighted aviary, I think, because there's a few like that. Since we've been here, we've added more and more facilities. And if we stayed, we'd have to add more, because you could just get these odd ones that can't go in with the others. Mm -hmm. But obviously we need to wait and see what happens. But I love this bird to bits, she's adorable. Have they been fed today? Not yet, no. I was waiting for you to come. Oh, <laughs> That's just about enough for the main aviary. Mm -hmm. Working with gulls, it's not easy work. Your Stephen would go mad if you saw that big bowl of fish, wouldn't he? Yeah, if, Steve, if Stephen saw me right now, he would attack. <laughs> He'd steal it off. Of feeding one at about 100. <laughs> it's just that thing of throwing food stimulates them to rush for it to stop the others getting it. But when they're like just a couple together, they can be extremely fussy. I'm surprised you managed to get your sweet fruit. Hello, mate. <laughs> yeah. Because we, this one's, I don't poo as soon as we get a camera. <laughs> we think this is a Caspian gull. If you can see by the speckled, it's a, it's a three-year-old. But if you if you get it to talk, it's got a tiny little head, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, right, oh, yeah, that is very different. It's like a parrot. A much higher voice than the herring gulls. The smaller, the higher the voice. Thank you. This is what happens when you find it. Who is a girl? Oh, another one. <laughs> nope. Yeah, Number two. <laughs> Stand here all day with them up. Well, there's me all the time, Anne a couple of times a week, Jetta a couple of times a week. Got two lads that come that are doing animal courses at college, mm -hmm. and there's a nurse that comes. There's about six. So now Anne's gone. So it's just me for the rest of the day. Yeah. So then, because what they've all got to be cleaned again and fed again. And it's my son's birthday, so I should be doing stuff with him. So I need to try and get finished early so I can go and do some birthday stuff with him. I know, you're gorgeous, aren't you? You see, some of them, you look at them. Compared to the usual stuff that I post, this video has been pretty different. I've never made one where I'm not trying to be funny, I'm not trying to be entertaining. We were just getting a tour of Bird Aid. And it's the first time since feeding Stephen that I've taken like a proper break from making videos and I could just stop for a minute and realise the sort of audience and position I'm in to show light on people needing help, people like Julia. Julia and Anne, everyone who works at Bird Aid, I've never met a group of more hardworking and just people dedicated to saving animals and it was just... It was really inspiring to meet them, honestly. After that last clip that we filmed in the hospital, we went and just had a big long chat about all the, the kind of troubles that they've had over these past few years, troubles with COVID, legal issues with former trustees that made promises that they never delivered on, and it's kind of put them into this position where they need to fundraise a lot of money so they can stay open. It's just so heartbreaking listening to Julia talk about all these issues. Meanwhile, she's working so hard every single day, her entire day, dedicating her entire life to saving these birds and like they're being threatened to like close down just is really sad to hear that's why i made this video so you guys can meet julia and i can just kind of put the spotlight on bird aid for a minute
minute. If you guys want to help, we have this merch run, this Crack Steven design, and then there's another design called Cheeky Steven. Jumpers, there's hoodies, there's pillows, there's a lot of stuff. If you guys want to check it out, there's going to be a link in the description for feedingsteven.com. And 100% of the profits that comes from these two designs goes directly towards Bird Aid. Nearer the end of their fundraiser, we're going to keep it going till November and just see how much we can raise for them. And if you're not really interested in the merch, you can just donate directly through the Just Giving link in the description of this video. If you can't donate, that's totally okay. Even just checking out their Instagram, giving them a follow, giving them a share goes a long way in helping them out. But anyway guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. It's been a weird one. I never really just kind of speak like this to the camera. I feel like I always need to be funny and this one's just been a nice break where I can just be serious for a moment. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it and I'll see you tomorrow for another funny video. Bye. <laughs>